Hello. 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 Great. Um, so guys, today we continue our mountain escape semester with uh, we're working on what's commonly known as the traffic rule. Now, the context of the traffic rule really is basically I'm underneath the mount and my opponent's hands end up heavy on the mat or the ground. So if you're in a self-defense situation, it would be on the ground. I want to make a quick note about this because I think that um, a lot of the ways that people show the traffic roll are stupid and don't work. Thank you guys for putting my hands off. That's the end of that. Now roll. No. Um, there's a couple of things that I think people really misunderstand about what's effective with the traffic roll and what's not. Okay? So let me show you what people tend to show and we'll tell you what I disagree with and then we'll go into why I think what I'm going to show today is more effective and I can prove that by the year future. So here I got. This is the traffic rule as often shown. Up both hands, please. Turn your palm up, please, so you don't break your wrist. Okay. How many of y'all have like had a lot of success with that exact variation? This thing? This thing? No, like never worked once. I think like literally we have like I don't know if you guys know this, but there's like a plaque in the back for the first time that ever works. And then we're gonna give it to that person. I'm like, oh, it finally happened! Right. So there's a couple things to think about, guys. And the first thing I want to touch on when it comes to the trap and roll is <clears throat> do me a favor, I want you to put your hands on the floor but keep your weight on your knees. Alright? Don't let me steal this arm. It's like pull it away from me. Oh, and put it back. Put it back. Keep taking it away from me. Nope. Nope. Is this looking familiar to people? Right? Guys, if his weight's on his knees, it's not on his hands. Which means he's going to pull his hand away. If I try to grab your hand and there's no weight on it, you're going to pull it away. The context of this move is that his weight is on his hands. right? If you put all your weight on your hands, at very least, it will go over a more efficient trap. But at very least, if he's trying to pull it away, it's like my timing's a little better. He has to distribute his weight back to the lower half of his body. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. There's like a kind of sweet spot of a moment where, let's say you posture back up, when I bridge and I knee him and he immediately puts his weight on his hands. But if you guys watch, I want you to pay attention, just react naturally. Watch like the way his body shifts once his hands have touched the floor. Where did his weight just go? Right. So I have like that half, a, like that, that fraction of a second. We go back where it's like, okay, boom. And theoretically, if I get it, but he's already taken it away from me. Right? Does that make sense, guys? So, it's not to say that it's impossible to trap this arm <clears throat> immediately from the bridge and post, but it's to say that the moment that you have for that is really small, okay? We're going to talk in a minute about, uh, well, you know, let's just go ahead and get to that now. We'll delve a little deeper into the intricacies of this later on, but here's another thing, okay? Let's say I wanted to do my elbow escape that we just went over. Right, let me see. Can I get everybody basically like over here? This is the, this is the place to be, guys. Okay. So I've bridged, I've made John's hand post or hands post, right? I start wedging my elbow between his knees, and John pinches his knees together. Right? His weight just went to his hands. Because in order, let me get you out of here for a second. If you just get on the mountain and get some visible opponent. If he wants to pinch his knees together, get, pinch your knees together, right? Where did his weight just go? Mm -hmm. It's going to go forward because he's taking his weight off his legs. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. If I get him to put his weight forward, his hands will be heavy. It will be easier to trap. If his weight's backward, his hands will be light. It's like, don't let him grab your wrist. Don't pull away from him. Oh, if I could. Right? Whereas it's like, lean forward and put your weight on your hands. It's like, don't let him grab your wrist. It's like, he's got to react. I have to, he has to react and go, oh, he's going for my wrist. Oh, let me drift my weight back. Let me put my hand away. It might not be like a conscious thing. He might not be consciously thinking those words, but like that's the thought pattern. Like that's instinctively what his body's going to do, right? So to trap this arm, I'm either relying on the instant moment in which his hand hits the ground, right? So it's like boom and immediately grabbing it. Or if his weight starts drifting backward, I'm going to start working my elbow escape because he's going to pinch his knees together if he doesn't want to get an elbow escape. At which point, I go for this arm. Now let's talk about the trap. 
I'm not saying necessarily that this is never going to work, but I mean, if anybody who's like a blue belt and above sees this, I mean, is there anyone in this room who's a blue belt or above and sees this and isn't going like, thank you for putting your arm up here. Please give me this arm, right? Like this is money, dude. Like he's gonna grab a hold of this thing. He's gonna start Americana in it. Let's see, go for like, right? Straight arm bars, all this. I'm out of position, arm triangles. I'm way out of position by doing this, okay? I'm assuming that he's not going to have any technical ability or even just intuition to exploit this. You'd be surprised. Even people that aren't trained, it's like if I reach up like this and he just grabs around my head and arm and now this arm's out of position, you know, all it takes is to be enough out of position to where you can't connect your appendages to your body to compromise a lot of your ability to apply your skills. This is not what we want to be doing. The grip I'm looking for, okay? And we're gonna freeze this moment in time where his hands are on, heavy on the mat or on the ground. The hand uh, that's gonna cross the center line, so the one on the inside. So we got one going outside, one going inside. I'm gonna karate chop his elbow. Hiya! I just cut off his wrist, guys. I don't know if you saw that. I need another partner. Okay. I'm gonna karate chop his wrist, palm facing down. The other hand is gonna meet, like I'm giving a round of applause. Good job, good job, dude. Okay, and connect my hands. It's like a gable grip. Another way to think of it is I'm like, rah, rah, okay? So we're here, I chop, I catch. At this point, guys, and this is so, this is critical. I'm going to take his elbow and bring it across my center line. If I keep his elbow here, pull your arm free. No, wait, hold on. Let me do it again. Black belt powers, no, wait, no. All right, go ahead. All right, go back, get your arm free. So what I'm controlling him with now, guys, is two things. One is that his arm is out of position. See how his arm is now crossed his center line? And two is my elbow. Can everyone see this? My elbow is behind his elbow. So I not only have him pinch with my arms, but I have a wedge that like uh, really lightly start pulling your arm. I just want to like demonstrate. Right, you see like the mechanics of this. Obviously, if I didn't hold his arm, he could like find a way to wiggle free. But assuming like assuming I'm still holding your arm, just to demonstrate the mechanics, if he's just pulling his elbow back, my elbow blocks his elbow. I actually have a lot of strength from this. Okay, so this all makes sense so far, guys. So we go back one all the way to the top, just a review. I'm, if I'm doing this quickly, it's like immediately snatching that, all right? If I, if I do this and I, like, he settles, I'm going trap, I'm going elbow escape, he starts going here and I trap it. Does that make sense, everyone? Now, this is where we get just a little bit into the weeds, but like you're like, are we not in the weeds yet? <laughs> but um, here's the thing, guys. We often are told from the beginning that <coughs> trying to roll somebody laterally is a bad idea, which is because trying to roll somebody laterally is a bad idea. I try to roll John like a log towards my left. Do, don't let me roll you like a log to your left. <sighs> it will not work. So we always say bridge up to 45. But anybody who's ever done trapping rolls, uh, even this one with this good solid grip, will recognize that he can take this hand and post at his own 45. Right. So this looks familiar. Okay. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, let me get you off here for just a moment. I like to think of it like there are uh, four categories of responses, each successively better than the last. So the worst possible response is a like a voluntary negative response. So a resistant negative response, you can say, meaning like, uh, let's see, come here. Meaning I go to grab his wrist and he pulls it away from me. That's a resistant negative response. That's the hardest thing for me to beat because he's gonna use all of his effort to stop it. Okay, then would be like a neutral response. So he doesn't do anything, but I, if I wanna pull this wrist to me, I have to do all the work of bringing it to me. Okay, then we have a voluntary favorable response, which is I convince him that it's a good idea to punch his hands towards, right? And now I take that arm. And then the fourth and the best possible category of response I can acquire is what I would categorize as an involuntary favorable response. An involuntary favorable response is, please get on your knees, like a you fear in the mouth, is that, posture up please, is if I were to run up, if John didn't know I was here, and I were to run up and kick him in the back really hard, his hands are very likely gonna post to the ground. That is not a choice he made, that's an involuntary favorable response. So if the thing I wanna take advantage of is his hands posting, if I can trigger his instincts, that's huge. Does that make sense, guys? Here's another one, let me get you back. Your hands are posted. Okay, if I manage to trap this arm, and just hold that there, please, 
and I take him towards his face, what he's going to do is he's going to tuck his head and roll every time. If you push someone hard towards their face, they're going to tuck and roll. If they can't post, they're going to tuck and roll. So this is what I want with my trap. I'm not going to try to find like some sort of bridge, boom. I'm not going to try to find like some optimal bridging angle where it's like my solution is going to be muscular. My solution is going to be the fact that he's going to instinctively respond to protect himself from face planting. So what I'm going to do here, guys, let's rotate a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to pick my feet up and I'm going to swing. And I want to swing in such a way that I generate some momentum so that I can take my head and bring it under his armpit. So I'm changing our relative angle to where right now our zero degrees or our 12 o'clock is the same, and thus our 45 degree is the same. I want to change that to where my 45 is his 12 o'clock. Does that make sense? From here, guys, I do my 45 degree angle bridge, but now watch the angle that I send him towards. You see what I'm saying? I'm sending him towards a face plant. I'm not going to roll him like a 45 over his shoulder because he'll reach across and post if he has any uh, degree of technical skill. Also, he's going to go technical now, right? Like we know anyone who's trained like knows these re responses. They go technical now. They reach across. Here we go. Instead, from here, bridge, swing from here. At this point, as long as I'm sending him towards his face, like he can try to go technical now, but it's like he's going towards a face plan. He's going to tuck and roll. He's going to protect himself from hitting his head to the ground. Okay? So, you can see all that real fast. So, so, all that put together. Again, I'm either bridging, we'll go slow now, bridging and immediately grabbing it. Or, if his hands are down, and we'll go more into this in a minute, I go for my elbow escape. When he pitches his knees together, I snatch. My grip, hi-ya. Cable grip, drag the elbow across my center line. Elbow is wedging behind his triceps. So pull your elbow free. Go ahead. Very strong grip. I swing my legs, head goes under the armpit. So now you see how my 45 is his 12 o'clock. And then I'm just gonna bridge hard towards my 45. My goal is not to roll him, guys. Remember, your goal is not to roll this person. Your goal is to make his face hit the ground. He'll do the rest of the work for you. And you get on top. Does that make sense? Excellent. Does anybody have any questions? No. All right, let's start up. One, two, three. Thank you.